Welcome to Maniac Movies. Updates Wednesdays and Fridays. And uh, let's talk about Wrong Turn 2021, the most unexpectedly popular reboot maybe ever. What is that? Oh, oh my god! I saw someone. I did. I saw So Wrong Turn was a movie that came out in 2003. It was a cult hit. It came out right at the beginning of the uh, horror renaissance of the 2000s. It was actually, I believe, the first one really of that, that cycle of filmmaking that included movies like House of a Thousand Corpses, Dawn of the Dead remake, Saw, Hostel, all those movies because the MPAA was finally um, easing up restrictions and stopped being such dicks about everything. You know, like Especially after the Columbine shooting in the late 90s, you could barely show a drop of blood in a horror movie. But they finally eased off, and uh, we got Wrong Turn, and Wrong Turn was kind of like a mid-tier success. But it was a cult film, and because of that, they said, oh, we can make more money off of this. And they spewed out in pretty rapid succession five sequels, and uh, those sequels vary in quality. I'm actually going to do a video on the Wrong Turn franchise. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll do the first two movies as standalones, and I'll do all the, the other sequels as just kind of a burn through. I haven't decided yet. But uh, that, that is coming. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Friday. Hopefully I can get through all of them. But anyone who goes up there... What is this place? Guys! Ooh. They don't come back. So one surprising thing you'll notice about this right away is that it's written by Alan McElroy, who wrote the first movie in the series, which is amazing considering how remarkably different these films are. But it's also kind of amazing that this guy still has a career, and the reason I say that is that he wrote two of the most hated films of the 2000s. Literally, I'm not kidding. So he wrote Ballistic X vs. Sever, that Antonio Banderas, Lucy Liu movie. And while I don't remember that movie being all that bad, I mean, I don't remember it being good, I just remember it being kind of an in one year out the other action movie. The internet has decided that's one of the worst films ever made. And then Tekken, the movie version of the uh, fight, fighting game Tekken, he wrote that, and people people who like Tekken consider that movie to be an abomination against God. They hate that movie. I've never seen it. He's also apparently done a little bit of work on Star Trek Discovery, but only two episodes. So don't don't hold that too much against him, especially because I hear that the first season was actually all right. <clears throat> but yeah, he wrote this and is directed by Mike Nelson. Now I was thinking, uh, is this directed by the guy from Mystery Science Theater or Rift Tracks, which is free on Tubi? Uh, no, no, it's a different Mike Nelson. This is actually the guy who directed that movie, The Domestics, with Kate Bosworth, that um, kind of riff on uh, Mad Max, where it was the, uh, the domestic couple, the yuppie couple, fighting all these other different factions as they travel across the country. That's actually a pretty decent action movie. I like that movie. And I like this movie. This is a good movie. So this guy's kind of becoming a director to watch. Uh, this is a good-looking, well-staged uh, movie. The, the scares land. The acting is solid. It's intense, it's dark, it's daring, it's violent when it needs to be violent. So yeah, there's a reason that people are so positive on this movie. This is a solid flick. But <laughs> if you were like a mega fan of Wrong Turn and you were a mega fan of those sequels and prequels, half of them were prequels, parts four, five, and six were prequels. But if you go into this thinking you're seeing a movie like that, you might actually be a little pissed off. So that's that's the thing is you just have to know this this says nothing this is nothing to do with wrong turn this has the writer from the first movie and the title from the first movie and that is it people killing people in the woods is about as close as you get in terms of similarities I mean this is about as similar as um, hell I don't know from dust till dawn is to uh, showgirls it's like yeah they're in a strip club <laughs> and sometimes there's violent things happening but. Uh, yeah, so this, this is nothing to do with the original Wrong Turn movies. Although it does have this kind of winking joke towards the end where they say, uh, the boys have rented another uh, movie for movie night. It's about cannibals in the woods. And the, the dad goes, again? So this is the movie seven in the franchise, if you consider this part of the franchise, that does not have cannibals in the woods. There's no cannibalism. I kept waiting. I thought they were going to at least include cannibalism, but they didn't even include cannibalism. There's no mutants. No one's deformed. There are some pretty cool traps, though. It, it does at least include the traps and some pretty solid brutal kills, too. So, 
Yeah, this movie stars an actress named Charlotte Vega, who I am completely unaware of. She's from Spain, and uh, she has done relatively few uh, English language films. But she's great in the movie. She's playing a white character, but in, eh, she could be a tan white girl. It, it's fine. Her her accent is amazing. Like I did not hear her accent slip once in this movie for someone who's not a native English speaker. So she, she's really good, and this could be a kind of a star-making role for her. I wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of her... Um, like the witch for Anya Taylor Joy, like she could get work off of this. She's very attractive. She's very good in her part. She's very dedicated. She's she's really good in this movie, uh, and she's so you know standard setup. Her and a group of types, and that is one thing I guess criticizes this movie is that the kids, you know, the kids that go off into the woods to go get killed, basically, they are very much types. You know, have her. She's obviously the final girl. Then you have um, Emma Dumont, who. IMDb makes it look like it's the main character, considering I've heard of her. You know, she was on that show Aquarius with uh, David Duchovny from Californication, the show about Charles Manson, and then she was on that show The Originals, which was somehow related to the X-Men, I don't know. I mean, neither show lasted all that long, but I was aware of her. I really thought she was going to be the main character. No, no, she's, she's not. And then you have the asshole guy, you have the, the jock guy, and you have the nerdy guy, and that's, that's our kids going off into the woods. So, you know, it they're all fine like they're, they're, they're serviceable they, they play their roles the the name the photography is really good i mean you can see some of it behind me this is a, again this is a well shot movie it's a good looking movie this <laughs> frankly this puts all the wrong turn sequels to shame because the first wrong turn is the only one in that series that actually looked good even part two which was directed by joe lynch still wasn't a particularly good looking movie uh, but um yeah this is a good looking flick and this is unpredictable as hell man like about halfway through, I was like, okay, I know what's going to happen. And I was wrong. And then in the last 12, 15 minutes, I was like, okay, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Wrong again. So, yeah, I give this movie credit. I'm not even someone who watches movies like that. I actually kind of hate people that watch movies like that. We're like, oh, I know what's going to happen. I'm like, good for you. You're smarter than screenwriters. Shut the hell up. But, I, mean, I wasn't doing that in the movie theater or anything. I saw this last Saturday. I actually wanted to record this Saturday, but um, I went to a bar instead. <laughs> So I'm just getting around to this now. But it, it lines up with when I normally do updates, so it's fine. But yeah, so uh, it's an unpredictable movie. And for someone who watches as many horror movies as I do, that's that's saying something. Even uh, the people I saw this with were impressed. This was much better. you know, Because, I mean, the Wrong Turn franchise bottomed out. It did. Like, you know, part After part two, they're barely okay at best. Like, And I don't hate them. It's just they're, they're Z-grade thrown together straight to DVD stuff. And this movie is a like like I said, this is a legit real movie. Is um uh, so Matthew Modine. He plays uh Charlotte Vega's dad and he's in the movie more than I thought he was going to be, frankly. Because Matthew Modine, it felt like the add a name thing that movies will do where okay, we need one actor that people have heard of. Um what's that guy from Full Metal Jacket and Stranger Things doing right now? Let's get him. And I'm not the world's biggest fan of Matthew Medine, honestly. So, um, his, I, I didn't love him in this movie, but he was fine. And I, again, I was impressed that he was in it. Yeah, I mean, he's, 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 it's a meaty role. And his character is actually very likable. I'm just not a particular fan of the actor. But every time I think of him, I think of that old show Jiminy Glick that Martin Short hosted in the fat suit as the deranged film critic because he had named his sons Matthew and Modine. It's a running joke on the show, because I believe he had named his sons that right before the movie Cutthroat Island opened, assuming it was going to be a big hit and turn Matthew Modine into a superstar. And instead, Cutthroat Island was one of the biggest bombs of the 90s, and basically, I think it bankrupted the company that made it and basically made sure Matthew Modine was never going to top-line another movie again. But, uh, so yeah, um, I can't go too much further without getting into spoilers. A little bit of this is known, though. So, you know, the basic premise is that they come across basically off-grid. You know, like people that are living off grid, and uh, like if you saw if you saw that show The Outsiders that ran for two seasons, it's it's similar to that, but really in a way this movie felt more like a cult movie than a cannibal family in the woods movie. I mean, this isn't a cannibal family in the woods movie. It, it they feel like a cult. These off grid people are weird and they're, they're off. And you know when they're when we first see them, it actually felt to me very similar to the scene where we first meet the cannibal tribe in the Green Inferno, the Eli Ross movie. You know, it, it, it's a very foreboding area. It's it, The people act strange. They, they're all just very stone-faced. They glower. They're dressed somewhere between white trash and Native American. It's, it's hard to describe. 
and they're speaking this language that I know exists amongst hill folk. Um, my dad used to call them roaming Irish, uh, but it, it's a very weird, it doesn't sound like any, it sounds like a mix of a bunch of different accents, like a little bit of Dutch, a little bit of German, a little bit of Irish. It's just this weird kind of dialect that emerged amongst hill folk. And I could not tell what state this movie took place, and if they said I missed it, it was shot in Ohio, but Ohio's not on the Appalachian Trail, and this movie very specifically says these kids are on the Appalachian Trail. And West Virginia does, you know, Appalachian Trail does pass through West Virginia, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume this was supposed to be West Virginia, like in all of the other movies, even though it wasn't you know, filmed there, but I don't know how many of the other movies were filmed in West Virginia either, to be perfectly honest. So, what happens is these kids go into the woods that they're told not to go into, and you know, they run across the collective, and the collective essentially owned this mountain, this this portion. They they went up there, as they keep saying, it was 12 families. So 12 families, um, families were pretty big back then. This, they went before the Civil War. So they'd been up there for, uh, what's that, 150 some odd years. And they went up there to avoid the Civil War. Now, see, when I kept hearing that premise, I was thinking, oh no, this is going to be another antebellum. They're going to be up there, and it's going to be like the Confederacy, and they're going to have slaves. Blah, blah, blah. No. They, they, they're not. They're actually, they they were, they were almost neutral in the Civil War. They just didn't want to be involved. And the Civil War was such a bloody conflict, and so many people died that you know, it's kind of understandable. But it, there's you know white people up there. There's black people up there. They 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 aren't concerned with race. And that was something that was so nice. And it's so sad that I have to even say that. But at this point, it's nice watching a movie that doesn't have any kind of political messaging in it. I didn't. I never felt preached at by this movie. So The Collective is a little bit like kind of a socialist. They pretend to be a socialist utopia, but they're actually very brutally violent towards outsiders. So essentially they're just taking all their anger out on outsiders because it's, it, it's essentially permissible to do anything to someone who's not living on this mountain. Like no rules, all bets are off. They will... I actually checked to see if this was written by S. Craig Zoller because I didn't realize um, McElroy had been brought back. So after the movie, I, I, I mean, this is a movie where you have to watch the credits, by the way. Sit through the credits. Do not turn this thing off when you see the title card. Like, like it ends, wrong turn. You miss the ending of the movie if you stop the movie there. Like, seriously, you have got to watch the credits. I'm not kidding. You, you do not know how this movie ends if you don't watch the credits. But yeah, I was going to watch the credits anyway because I wanted to see, was S. Craig Zoller involved in writing this? Because it has some stuff that was as dark and complicated and sadistic as you'd expect. Like, I was like, and this is more like Bone Tomahawk than Wrong Turn. Yes, Craig Zoller, of course, wrote and directed Bone Tomahawk. Um, Brawl and Cell Block, what is it? I always forget the number. 13, maybe? Uh, Dragged Across Concrete, he's written some books. And he wrote the last Puppet Master movie randomly. So this is a good movie. Um, the cast is good. Uh, Bill Sage is the main villain, and that was kind of cool. Uh, he played Van Patten in American Psycho with Christian Bale forever ago, just one of uh, Patrick Bateman's buddies. And I kept thinking, I recognize this guy, I recognize this guy, why do I recognize this guy? And I looked at him, he was in the American remake of We Are What We Are, uh, the Spanish film about the cannibal family, ironically. I don't remember that movie that well, but I've seen that poster so many times that it just, uh, yeah, he looks exactly the same. His performance is fantastic. Again, the acting is across the board very good. His daughter is also good in it, the, the actress playing his daughter. She's the real-life daughter of Anthony Head from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer as the watcher that was mentoring Buffy and then Repo the, Genic, ge bleh, Repo the Genetic Opera. He was the Repo Man. So this is his daughter. She's good in it. Yeah, they, this is all around good. The, the violence, again, is very solid. It's very gory. Um, it has a little bit of an issue with pacing in that just by its structure. This is one of those movies that stops and then starts again halfway through. As is almost a different movie. Not not in a jarring way or in a badly written way. And if I was in more into Matthew Modine's character, I wouldn't have minded at all. And that was really just... That's just me. I just never liked that actor. I don't... Perfectly nice guy for all I know. I don't, I don't know anything about his personal life. I just never liked that actor. I mean, you replace Matthew Modine with James Rimmer or Michael Bean or some other guy in that age range, I would have been completely on board with it. It's just the actor didn't really work for me, so I just wasn't fully engaged with it when it kind of suddenly resets to becoming his movie. But, um, yeah, overall, it's a very good movie, very unpredictable movie, some good gore, some really dark stuff towards the end. Uh, uh, if, if you don't like the idea of your eyeballs being messed with, or being really, really, really dehumanized. I also like how they do this sort of um, thing with people being brainwashed into a cult. 
and that was pretty realistic. So overall, good movie. Watch the credits. And um, yeah, keep an eye out because I do plan on doing videos on the rest of the franchise. Hopefully I'll get all of them done this week. See ya.